experience that we had that we had this summer at memory camp. We have three guest speakers. We have Gary Glazner, the executive director. He was the poet in residence um, at memory camp this summer. Carrie Esselman, the grant manager at Fox Valley Memory Project, and she was co-director at memory camp this summer. And Annie Lamer, she was a camper and is a family caregiver. So welcome and thank you so much to our guest speakers. The format, for Webinar Wednesday, I'm going to give everyone a high-level overview of how Respite, Respite Care Association of Wisconsin, how we run, the things we can offer family caregivers and professionals, and then I'm going to turn it over to our guest speakers, and we're going to share with you a lot about Memory Camp, um, the magic that was shared, and potentially how this can be replicated in other areas of the state. So RCAW, we serve all 72 counties and 11, all 11 federally recognized tribes. And our mission is to promote support and expand quality respite care across the lifespan. So we work with primary caregivers who have children living with special needs, adult children living um, with any kind of intellectual or developmental disabilities, um, part or grandparents raising grandchildren, spouses caring for spouses. So anyone who's caring for anyone, we can help. A lot of times, um, and we really, at the National Lifespan Respite Conference, we heard this loud and clear, sometimes people don't know what respite care is and that's okay. And I'm assuming because you're here today, you do know what respite is, but I never want to assume things. So I always want to take the opportunity to talk about what it is exactly. And essentially what it is, it's a short-term break for primary caregivers, and it gives them an opportunity to do things that they need to do. Some like to say to rest, refresh, or recharge. Um, some like to say uh, there's many different definitions, but essentially what it is, is it gives them temporary relief to do the things that they need to do, whether it's to take a nap, whether it's to take care of their own medical needs, whether it's to maybe go on a girl's trip or to, to go on, there's, I mean, a million things that people can do when they get that break. So that's essentially where it is or what it is. It can be for a few hours, it could be for a few days, for a few weeks, and it can be in many different settings, in homes, in a facility, based environment at camps, but what it really is, is giving that person who cares for the care recipient 24 hours a day, a break to take care of themselves, which is so critical. So I'm not going to read slides to you because we all know we've been on presentations and it's a snooze, but I think this is really important data for everyone to realize and, and to read if you haven't seen it yet, but it's if people try and say that family caregivers aren't the backbone to the healthcare industry, show them this data. So there's 53 million caregivers in the United States and $47 billion total value to the to um, economic value totaling $470 billion. And we do have a public or a former public health officer on the call today, but one time I was listening to um, Dr. Whitmore speak and it's really, settled with me. And when I heard Kim say that respite care is a critical public health intervention, I've used that phrase so many times because it absolutely is a critical public health intervention. Um, giving caregivers that break to rest, refresh, and recharge can really be a proactive way to decrease the likelihood of so many other chronic health conditions, whether it's mental health, physical health. So it's really important to get them that break. So here's some more data that I got from, it's from the ARC Wisconsin. There's 580,000 informal caregivers in Wisconsin. So one in five Wisconsinites are family caregivers. Families provide 80% of all the care in Wisconsin. Another astounding fact and proof that family caregivers are the backbone to the healthcare industry. And it's really, excuse me, um, a lot of the caregivers, they're also doing this little side thing called a full-time job. And uh, oftentimes they're needing to cut back on their hours or they're needing to quit their jobs and they're losing income. And imagine having a full-time 
caregiving job that's demanding and now you're losing income, what is that going to do to your mental health and your physical health and, and your overall well-being? It's not an easy job. And it's really important that we're all calling attention to this and doing things for family caregivers. And the thing that we can do first is provide them respite. There are so many benefits to respite. It can boost their social, emotional, and physical health. Oftentimes when we're dealing with I don't want to say dealing with, when we're assisting and working with caregivers, we hear, I used to have um, a friend, you know, a friend group that I would get together with. I used to do this. I used to do that. It's always these, I used to do things. And now they just see themselves as the care recipient's caregiver, and they've lost a sense of identity. So giving them a couple hours a week to be able to do things gives them that sense of identity and think, I mean, I'll probably see the word mental health a thousand times during webinar Wednesday, but especially since the pandemic, I can't tell you how many um, mental health crisis calls our CAW gets, but just giving them that couple hours a week of a break is critical. Um, it can reduce friction between the caregiver and the care recipient. If someone is at their max and at their breaking point, um, just getting that break can reduce friction between the both of them. Also getting that break can decrease the institutional placements of having to place a loved one in um, any kind of facility like a skilled nursing facility and assisted living or an adult family home. And it can also prevent bad habits. There's data that we just learned um, about caregivers that are under so much stress, they might turn to um, and form addictive habits, unfortunately, whether it be food, alcohol, drugs, just to kind of numb the stress that they're under because it is so stressful. I'm not certain how many of you are familiar with the National Family Caregiver Support Program, but they did a study and caregivers who receive four or more hours of respite care per week uh, self-reported a decrease in burden over time. And if you think about it, four hours isn't that much. So just having four hours a week, that can decrease so many of the physical health and mental health experiences that they report having. We love doing, I want to watch my time and make sure we have enough. These are uh, just, like I said, I want to make sure I'm allowing enough time for our guest speakers. So this is a survey that we conducted with some individuals that received some funds for our caregiver respite grant program. They're not going on lavish vacations, although we wish they could. They're spending time with their other family members. There's a lot of um, re a lot of stories and information that being a caregiver really affects other relationships within their families and within their other relationships within their families. They're having time to relax, spend time with their spouse and partner, participate in social activities. There are barriers to receiving respite care. First of all, people don't know what it is. The other huge barrier is caregivers don't identify as caregivers. They don't they're, they think I'm a, I'm a mom caring for my, my child with special needs, or I'm, I'm someone's wife caring for my spouse living with um, a form of dementia. So they don't identify as a caregiver. They might not understand the value of respite care. There's a big lack of respite care providers. It's hard to afford respite care, especially going back to something I said earlier about employed caregivers and having to potentially cut back at work or maybe um, have to leave your job because of caregiving duties. So you, then it's, it's hard to pay for a respite care provider. And there might be a lack of trust hiring someone from the outside. So now I want to tell you um, a little bit of how our CAW helps break those barriers down. We want to help increase the pool of trained respite care providers across the state in all 72 counties and 11 tribes. So we have some free online courses. We have, for those interested in learning about becoming a respite care provider, we have the respite care provider training. It's free. It is, um, an, it's an online course. When you're done, you get a certificate for seven hours of completion. You can start and stop and work at your own pace. 
Um, there are 10 courses. And when someone completes the respite care provider training, uh, they then have the choice to list themselves on the Wisconsin Respite Care Registry, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And I am absolutely breezing through this and um, emphasis on high level overview. And I'm more than happy to talk with anyone further in detail about any anything after this. Um, something that even though we're not in we, RCAW, we're not the employers of those listed on the registry. Once again, we'll talk about in just a few seconds. We do see the value in investing in their furthering their education. So if someone completes the respite care provider training and lists themselves on the registry, um, we do offer funds and can offset the cost of them going, you know, anything to continue their education. If they want to go to conferences or workshops, there's uh, direct courses online. There's 45 courses with the online curricula for life and community. Uh, and that kind of does a deeper dive into specific diagnosis. And then we have um, promo codes through the UW Oshkosh Dementia Capable Wisconsin. There's a dementia generalist for healthcare providers and then a dementia specialist. And we also have promo codes for anyone on here who is um, a friend or a family member caring for someone living with dementia. Um, you don't have to take the respite care provider training in order to get that promo code. We're happy to share that with you. So um, I'll, I will absolutely share my email with you and I can share more information. We have some furthering education with people who um, want to become an independent respite care provider. And then once they, they can take that course online and how to market themselves as a respite care provider. We also offer courses for caregivers. Um, once, once you, once a caregiver, sometimes they don't feel like they need respite or or they want to do accept respite rather until it's maybe an emergent situation and then it's like okay now what well this kit for caregivers it's how to hire train and retain um, a respite care provider and one of the things that we saw value in was the last thing a caregiver might want to do is take a course they're exhausted and their plates are not full they're overflowing so if you go to the website and go to the free courses you don't have to go through the course you're more than welcome to but there are links um, on this page and you can just download the pertinent pdfs on the interview questions how to run a background check and all the i believe there's five or six downloads that you can just kind of grab and go and use and they're pretty self-explanatory so like i said more than welcome to take the training more than welcome just to kind of grab and go with the the pdfs um, this is the information I was telling you earlier about uh, the promo codes that we have. So if you're a friend or family member, you don't have to take the respite care provider training to get the promo code. Let me know. I'm happy to connect you with um, UW Oshkosh and you can take this course. It's online. You can work at your own pace. It's not like we follow up and you know mandate that you complete it. We just want to give family caregivers the tools and the better understanding on the disease, the disease progression, better techniques on communicating with your loved one living with um, some type of dementia. And then for any professionals, we do have this Dementia Generalist for Healthcare Providers promo code and the Dementia Specialist. I've taken all of them and they're they're wonderful. The registry, essentially what it is, it's a consumer-based platform. It's free of charge. So anyone who's completed the respite care provider training, they can list themselves on there. And what it is, it's a bridge to connect people who need respite care to people who provide the respite care. End users can then go and search by the county, the county and where they live. So children, like I said, we serve the lifespan. So if, if you're a caregiver of a child or of an adult or of an older adult, the county, and then it auto-populates anyone who's taken the respite care provider training. A frequently asked question, um, have, you know, do they have background checks? So it's, like I said, it's a consumer-based platform and it's up to the person hiring the respite care provider to run the background check, interview them and make an informed decision if it's a good fit for them. But like I said, we do have information on our website on how to run a background check. And we're happy to help answer any questions about that process. We do have some grant programs. 
Uh, we have a caregiver respite grant program. Going back to the list of barriers of respite care and people might not be, uh, might have a hard time trusting someone they don't know. One of my favorite things about the caregiver respite about the caregiver respite grant program is you can hire the person of your choice. You can hire a friend, a family member, a neighbor, someone who's familiar with the care recipient. You can also hire someone from an agency. We also have, depending on the acuity of your loved one, um, we have people who use this grant to offset the cost of skilled, like a, a nursing home, a skilled nursing facility stay. Um, so we have no preference on who you use to provide the respite care. We really just want the caregivers to get a break and you can reapply every 90 days. Um, if you're on this call, you may have seen it change. It depends on our funding. Um, we have had to change it before that caregivers could apply twice a year, but we did receive an increase in funding. So now caregivers can apply four times a year. So always check our website. We keep our website up to date with all of the information on how often you can apply. The supplemental respite grant program, um, that is something you can apply for four times a year as well when it's $250 every 90 days. And that can offset the cost of home modifications, uh, meal prep, laundry, snow removal. Did I say lawn care? I may have. Transportation. Um, that transportation is to and from doctor's appointments or respite activities. And I definitely would say that um, housekeeping is the number one used um, resource for that. And same thing, we have no preference on who you hire. You can hire an outside provider, a company, um, anyone who you'd like. We have no preference. We just want you to get the break. This is the list of the eligibility criteria. The grants are not income-based. I can tell you everyone is eligible for these grants. We ask that you try something else first. And we ask that either someone at the AD or the Aging and Disability Resource Center or the ADRC or the county fills out. It's a fillable online form. Um, I see the average time it takes because I see the stuff on the back end. It's usually like under two minutes. Um, we ask someone from either the ADRC or the county just to verify that you have tried another long-term care waiver first. And these are the eligibility criteria, um, or this is the eligibility criteria, but we've made it to where everyone is eligible for this. We just want to connect caregivers to existing programs first. The core grant, this is the grant that's available for agencies. And essentially what this is, is to bring agencies together with the hopes of providing educational events for family caregivers and increase the pool and increase the workforce. A group respite grant, it's exactly what, what, it, what it is, it's for groups. Um, we have, um, speaking of the Fox Valley Memory Project, it's one of our more recent applicants. Um, they will run opportunities for caregivers to come together. Um, that's just say for a book club. I'm, uh, we run so many grants with a bunch of different counties. So I'm just gonna say a book club for now. But a lot of the times the barrier is the caregivers couldn't come to the book club because they don't have respite care. So they would hire an outside agency, CNAs, um, to come in on site, same location as the book club to provide meaningful engagement and, and meaningful activities with the care recipients. And then the caregivers can go to the book club or the support group. Okay, I'm four minutes over on time and I apologize, but now we're gonna start and talk about our guest speakers. This is probably, I literally, my favorite week of the summer. We're gonna talk about Memory Camp. It's in St. Germain, um, St. Germain, Wisconsin. And I'm gonna turn it over to Carrie Esselman. Thank you so much, Carrie. I wish I could start clapping, but I don't know. If <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, like Rachel said, my name is Carrie Esselman, and I am the grant manager at the Fox Valley Memory Project. But I have had um, the pleasure to um, make Memory Camp a dream to attend, and I made it a reality um, last year. Um, and then kind of within role changes and whatnot, was able to be the 
uh, memory camp co-director this year, which was a wonderful experience. Um, I just have to do a shout out to my friends oh, on that last screen. Um, that was my two uh, or my one family that I was assigned to as a volunteer to be there for them, um, to unpack their car, to make sure they're settled, make sure they're at each dinner, set the table for them. Um, and that was, was the second year. They are from San Francisco, California. And so they flew in the last two years um, to come to memory camp. Which is really incredible that they are getting on a plane and flying across the country. It must be that good to come. <laughs> right, right. Well, and he used to be a, a camp director. And so coming back to camp, um, not only, you know, how many years later, but, uh, you know, with leaving the memory issues or the diagnosis at the top of the hill um, is was definitely something that um, benefited him because he felt like he was just back in his element at camp. So, so what memory camp is, is it's designed um, to um, at a family camp in St. Germain, Wisconsin. Um, it's an established camp, the United Church of Christ camps. Um, it's already established and they do camps for individuals with autism. It's called Camp Awesome. Uh, throughout the summer, they do family camps um, and whatnot. And so they have held, um, held and reserved a week that we can come up and do memory camps. So we invite anyone and everyone that is um, living with memory loss uh, and their families, um, whether it's just husband and wife, mother and daughter, or it's husband, wife, daughter, granddaughter, grandson, um, we've had campers come with four other family members, and so they're all able to have their own cabins um, and come experience the week together um, with no, um, no judgment um, and a free, just kind of a free week. The one thing about, um, oh gosh, these pictures just make me smile. Um, I the know. One thing about the week and um, why it's so wonderful that Rachel is involved in memory camp too is we provide respite for the caregivers. And whether they want to go for a walk or they want to go on a kayak. Um, so us volunteers um, come to camp and we do a training um, and we're able to um, train the volunteers kind of on the basics of dementia, how the, the camp is run, um, the ins and outs of making a s'more. <laughs> and uh, we're able to team up and give respite to those caregivers. Um, but not only do we just give respite to those caregivers, we're able to still engage those individuals, you know, living with that memory loss in an appropriate activity. We're, we're able to take them for a walk while the caregiver goes out on the kayak. Um, or we're able to sit by the fire with them or sit at the lake um, at night when their caregivers enjoying the movie that we had. Um, and so, you know, twist my arm to be a volunteer to take someone and sit at the lake and watch the sunset with them um, while talking with them during memory camp. So um, we have a daily schedule. So in its very um, fluid schedule, um, there's things to do, but it's all up to you if you'd like to do that or not. Um, there's always breakfast, lunch, and dinner. All three meals are always included and they're glorious. They are a full, um, full menu and um, salad bar at lunch and dinner, which is phenomenal. So um, the one thing that we do do that um, the camp does is they have FOB time. If you see on that schedule there, it's F-O-B. And that is at 1.30 each day. Um, it's feet on bed, flat on back. It's just a time to take a time out of the day for everyone to rest. Um, so it's just kind of helping promote that rest and relaxation for caregivers, for their loved ones. Um, but this year, you know, it was interesting that everyone went back to their, their cabin. Um, they went in, had a floaty in the water, and they're like, we're flat on our back. We're able to just float and be in the water and enjoy ourselves. Um, we did have a um, memory on um, the Moon Beach camp actually had bought their own pontoon this year. So we were able to take pontoon rides. Um, we kind of just had a laid back settle in when everyone got there. Um, and then we did an amazing poetry session with Gary Gleisner and um, 
he can talk more about that. Um, we did a loon talk when we went and paddled through the bog. Um, and there's a, a, just a bunch of different things that we did. And not everyone needed to come to everything that we were doing. It was completely up to each individual, each individual couple or family um, of when they wanted to, to come. Um, meals were at a certain time that they were able to come, but it was a very nice social event. Um, and as you can see on the uh, in the evenings, we, you know, we had dinner and then we did a cookout. So it was outside, we grilled. Um, and then we did a kind of a more fancy dinner at Moon Beach. Um, and then we did a talent show. So we were able to um, have quite the crowd. We had 26 campers at camp, which wasn't including the staff at Moon Beach. Um, we had about 10 um, volunteers to about 16 campers this year, um, which was plenty because we were able to have one or two volunteers per family member there uh, to support that family with anything and everything they may have needed. So, um, can you tell us? So, when when did the volunteers arrive? What are the expectations of volunteers, um, and what kind of training do they get? Yeah, yeah. So, um, what's so nice about being a volunteer is is I know Rachel, you said that you look forward to this week every year of the I summer, and, and so do I because it just refills your bucket to, to be able to experience this week with everyone. Um, and as a volunteer, we all arrive Sunday evening around five o'clock, um, and you know we get um, we order in some local pizza and grub and um, kind of sit by the water and and chat and everyone gets settled into their, their cabin. Um, and we just, we just relax. So we kind of all just take a deep breath um, and get acquainted. And right away, Monday morning, we wake up for a nice breakfast. And then from nine until about noon, we have a volunteer training. Um, in the past couple of years, uh, Rachel and I have provided this training and the training is on uh, you know, the basics of dementia, but it really goes into why do we have memory camp and why do we want to still and still still have these experiences for these families um, and why we leave the diagnosis of anybody at the top of the hill, we say, um, so that everyone can come and just be on the same playing field. We're all supportive of each other and we're all in this together for the week. Um, and then we we have a little break time, we have lunch, we have a break time, and then all the campers come. So we kind of take our positions and it's it's a really exciting time. It's like the calm before the storm, but it's not a storm, the calm before the rainbow, because uh, we're all standing there waiting and for who's going to come first, you know, and and uh, our couple from San Francisco came first this year and we just kind of swarmed to their vehicle to help them in and we were all just so excited to see them so um it's just a very um relaxed laid back time for the volunteers in the beginning and then once campers come it's get them settled in make their beds for them and then it's dinner so um the volunteers um are definitely an essential part of this camp to make it happen um, because their uh, laid back energy helps the caregivers become a little more laid back as well. For sure. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah. Gosh, I just want to, I want it to be summer right now and I want to go. I know. <laughs> <It's pictures. laughs> I know. Gary, you ready, buddy? Whoops. <laughs> I can't figure out how to get this top bar to go away. I wish it would. Gary, you're on mute, bud. Of course, thank you. <laughs> Welcome well, to Well, I Gary. think I want to draw people's attention to the campfire. Gary, I miss you. Holy cow. Hey, anybody want to have some s'mores? Now, Rachel, yeah. you have to turn your thing back on. You can't be behind the recall. <laughs> well, I didn't know if I would like start getting <laughs> choked up, honestly. So I was like, I got to turn this off because I, I do. I get something about talking about it. I get a little, a little teary eyed. But here I am. Good, because I, I anticipated this was going to be a Q&A. <laughs> it is Q&A, Gary. 
<laughs> Are you going to ask me a question? Yeah, definitely. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Gary, how many years have you volunteered at Memory Camp or how many years have you been there? Yeah, so this is my fourth year of uh, being the poet in residence. Uh, three were in person and one uh, during COVID was a virtual event that we created. And I was invited by the founders, uh, John and Susan McFadden. And shout out to them. Yeah, big shout out to them. And I remember at the end of the first one, um, we sort of gathered and kind of did a download of what happened. And, you know, and, uh, and they said, do you want to come back? And I said, yes, I want to come back. Um, what keeps been, you coming back? Well, that's a great question. <laughs> Uh, I've been doing uh, work with people with Alzheimer's dementia. I first started in 1997. So I've, I've done a lot of work in this field. I'm, I'm getting a little bit teary eyed thinking about memory camp. Um, and I've had the honor to work with, with many, many people and, and in um, 35 states and seven different countries. So I've worked in all kinds of cultures and languages and just had really a wonderful experience. But I, when I look back on all of that, I think that the memory camp, now I'm really gonna start losing it. Um, no. I think the memory camp is the most rewarding experience. And I think in part that's because, like Carrie said, our, our motto is that diagnosis gets left at the top of the hill, but there really is no, um, you know, we're, we're just sort of meld into a community and we're helping each other and joking and getting to know each other in a way that's um, very deep and very satisfying on a, a spiritual level and a humanistic level and a level as a person that you know really likes the sound of trains <laughs> i love trains <laughs> trains are better than crying sometimes sometimes <laughs> So uh, uh, also, I, um, I gauge how uh, successful a summer is by how many times I get to swim. And as you can see from the photo, I'm in my favorite place at uh, Moon Beach, Moon yes. Lake, which is in the lake. I, um, I start each morning uh, about 6 or 7 a.m. and go right to the water. And, and the top one foot is really warm. So if you kind of lay out, you're just in the warm part as long as you don't dip down too much. Um, yeah, so I think that's what keeps co me coming back is that sort of recharging, uh, which we yeah. talked about earlier of why do people need respite and how is it successful? I remember after my first one, I had a workshop uh, in Janesville and I came into the, it was a conference they were doing, I came in and my friend uh, Noreen, who I'd worked with for years, and she, I walked in and she said, she says, what happened to you? I've never seen you so relaxed. Aww. And I just was, you know, I guess I was sort of floating and just my body was relaxed. And so I just think of that, um, you know, like, I think we all need respite in our lives. And this is a really an excellent um example of how to do that and the food is amazing and uh if you want to you can drive the golf cart <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's just a lot of fun and you can go paddling and uh and it's just it's just delightful and uh, see now as a kid i never got to go to summer camp and okay. um, so i was super excited after my first year when i made it through without calling my parents to come and pick me up <laughs> So my next question for you, Gary, is how do you see a transformation in people living with dementia when you're creating poetry with them? Yeah, so we create poems by 
saying a line of poetry and having the group, I mean, I mean, we perform poems by saying a line of poetry and have the group or the person say it back. And Rachel, yeah. would you just help me demonstrate that just for a second? Of course. Okay, so I'm going to say a line of poetry and then you repeat after me. And okay. we're going to do it uh, first in Spanish. Okay. Pan es pan. Pan es pan. Queso es queso. Queso es queso. No hay amor. No hay amor. Si no hay un beso. One more time. Beso, beso, beso. Beso, beso, beso. Abrazo. Abrazo. You have to give yourself a hug. Bread is bread. Bread is bread. Cheese is cheese. Cheese is cheese. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Not a kiss. Not a kiss. There is no love. There is no love. Hug. Hug. So um, I think the transformation comes in first. Uh, I remember one woman uh, after a session in New York, this is years ago, and she came up to me and she said, she said, you know, um, with dementia, sometimes we get nervous. And she mm -hmm. said, you ask us to do things. Mm -hmm. So I think that's part of it is just, um, you know, meeting people where they are, but, 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 you know, uh, creating a place for their humor, uh, to use touch, to use, uh, uh, singing and moving and so you can see uh, that building up the performance uh, starts to bond us as a group and then we create a poem by asking open-ended questions and this really opens up a space for the group's creativity and where they can um, in this case the poem was about uh, love and um, we had used uh, uh, baby face the song which John played on ukulele and we sang that you know she's got the sweetest little baby face and that led to everybody holding their partner's face and you can see some people started kissing and so then we we uh, we then started to create a poem by asking open-ended questions and I think that also is where the a transformation happens because you're asking someone their opinion about something and you're taking it really seriously and you're saying well it can even rise to the level of poetry or, or you know beautiful words in the best order is one definition and so we're creating that space for them to be funny and to be poignant and to express their deepest uh, you know thoughts about life and so i think that's where the transformation we see that happen and we see it on a pretty consistent basis of the of the workshops and um, some of it's just laughter just uh, you know having a, a moment where people can laugh um, some is uh, you can see in these photographs this is what they it's so true it's it's worth a thousand words I should just be quiet and say look at the photos because yeah. you can see that people are hugging each other and being playful with each other and um, you know those are moments of joy which is also part of the journey of life, but also of uh, uh, many types of um, you know challenges in life, including uh, navigating dementia uh, and having those moments of joy are, are very important. And I think that's at the base of Memory Camp is creating a space for those. Thank you. Gary, would you be so kind as our poet in residence to read us the poem that the group created together? I will, but you know what? We started by saying like, we don't want to read the PowerPoint. So I'm like torn, you know? Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm torn between it. And what I want to do is I want to ask, actually, um, you know, we have these great folks that are online, but they are they have their screens turned out. And I'm going to call on a couple. I don't know if, if Cynthia, Cynthia, are you there? Cynthia, are you in a place where you can turn on your screen and talk to us for a second? Cynthia... Jones, maybe Bethany, maybe Andrea, anybody who's there. I know Kim can't because she's driving. <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, Anne is there. Anne, would you like to read the first uh, 
few lines of the poem for us so it's not just my voice? Certainly. When I hear the word love, I think of hugs, red hearts, and nature. Love is babies, puppies, children, and family. I think of flowers. Our chocolate and friends, you've got the sweetest little baby face. And we want to you want go, me to go on? Oh, well, hold on. I want you to do it like you do, do join me on this. You've got the sweetest little, sweetest baby, little baby face. Baby face. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Let's uh let's shift to uh can is Kim there? Kim, are you still driving your car? I'm still driving. Do you want to do a little bit of the I poem? Can't. I know you can't. I know you can't read it, but do you want to do a little bit of the poem with me without crashing? You still there? Repeat after you. Yeah, repeat after me. That's right. That's right. So here we go. I'll say it, then you say it. The sound of love. Maybe this is not the best experiment. Let's see if she's... I'll do it. The sound of love. Singing a lullaby to my son. Singing a lullaby to my son. Singing a lullaby to Kim driving down the freeway in Milwaukee. <laughs> Singing a lullaby to Kim driving. <laughs> Orchids on prom night, corsage. Orchids on prom night, corsage. Did you say massage? Did you say massage? The taste of love. The taste of love. Dark chocolate and red wine. Dark chocolate and red wine. Wrapped in bacon. Wrapped in bacon. Lobster dipped in butter. Lobster dipped in butter. This next part is, I think, is, is one of my favorite parts. Love feels like a soft, warm blanket. Love feels like a soft, warm blanket. A steam shower dripping on your body. A steam shower dripping on your body. Love is holding hands. Love is holding hands. By the gentle ripples of Moon Lake. By the gentle ripples of Moon Lake. There's not another who can take his place. I can't sing, Gary. Just go like this. <laughs> <laughs> two people embracing two people embracing love teaches us patience love teaches us patience and understanding and understanding love is love love is love late at night late at night Blue. Loons. A loon singing by the lake. A loon singing by the lake. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gary. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was Gosh, really I miss you. I miss you too, and I'm so happy to do this. And I, I really hope that um, as we go forward, that it continues to grow and that maybe even uh, spreads to other locations as, as the memory cafes have done. There's so many cafes around the world and Wisconsin's a leader in that. And so I, I really see this as an opportunity to, you know, help people really uh, everywhere. I think just I think, do it. I think Annie's going to really tell us about that part. Yeah. Hi, Annie. Thank you again, Gary. Hi, Annie. Hey. Hello. 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 I'm glad you're taking us, you know, that whole 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, Annie. Thank you so much for being a guest speaker today. And I thought it would be really nice to re bring a perspective of someone who um, walked in your shoes during camp and, and came as a camper. So can you tell us how long have you been a family caregiver? For six and a half years now. Randy was diagnosed six and a half years ago. It's a long time. That's a long time, Annie. Yes, um, how, I did have how, to lose my job. So when I was talking about caregivers who often have to lose their job, you're, there was one on the call that was like, yep, that, that was me. 
Um, can can you tell us how did you get connected to Memory Camp? Memory Camp, Miss Carrie Esselman. <laughs> so you're involved with the Fox Valley Memory Project, right? Yes, I am. And um, she brought it up, I believe, at a book club meeting. And um, since I used to live, in, it was very appealing to me. And I knew it was to live in the Northwoods. Yeah. Yeah. And that, think, knowing that I, go ahead. I think your audio is a little choppy. I'm not sure if it is for anyone else. I don't know. It is a little fun. How are you doing? Can you? And this is, yep, this is Leslie. I'm having a choppy time too. Is it possible for you to turn your camera off and then sometimes it's easier to hear the audio? Possible for me to what? Turn your camera off. Sometimes the audio comes through a little nicer if the camera is not on. Broadband. Okay, let's see where that's at. So if you're at your laptop, you'll say stop video next to mute. Even though we'd love to see your beautiful face, sometimes that can be the quickest fix. Okay, is it better? Currently, yes. Yes? Yeah, keep keep going. Let's see if it gets better. Also, also shout out to your screensaver. That's really cute. What do I have for my screensaver? Oh, yeah, the menus. <laughs> <laughs> I am trying to get the meeting on the phone while I'm doing this. So um, you might have to let me in again because that might be better fix. We can hear you beautifully now. So you can? What we heard, yes, we, we can. So what we heard you say is you've been a caregiver for six and a half years to your amazing husband, Andy. Yes, we can. And so what we heard you say is you've been a caregiver for six and a half years to your amazing husband, Randy. And, ah! Those minions are playing tricks on us. Those minions are playing tricks on us. I'm going to, I'm leave. Going to leave. Annie. There she is. Are we better? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, I switched my phone. I'm sorry for all that. Don't be sorry. You're good. So were you nervous initially going to memory camp? Were you nervous going? Oh, I was scared out of my mind. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if I was bringing the right things. I didn't know how Randy would react to going somewhere different. Um, yeah, that's the answer to that question. <laughs> what was the experience like for you, Annie? Oh my God, it was like my shoulders went down three inches. I knew I did not have to worry about him you guys with the crying already um it was you know when you asked at the camp what my word was for what it had felt like for me to be there i said freeing because my soul felt free my body felt free i knew that there was someone there for randy if i could if i wanted to do something like take a walk or just read my book or just sit in the cabin by myself for 10 minutes i could call on you rachel as you and your daughter were our volunteers and you'd be there lickety split it was a quick text and you were there and it was <sighs> Yeah, freeing. I just felt like my responsibilities had taken a big time break. And um, yeah, I wrote all those words on here, or you did, and I carry it with me wherever I go. So it was, it was wonderful. I swam, I, you know, read my book. Randy and I played cribbage. We looked at the lake. He enjoyed it tremendously. I will be going back until the day I die, if that's at all possible. That's what's going to happen. Absolutely. And I had myself muted, Annie, because when you were having audio issues, my dogs were going crazy. So it was like a, 
but I'm so glad we could be there for you and you could get that respite. And it was so nice to watch you play cribbage together and to see you swim. What would you say your favorite part was? And that warms my heart that you, I'll, I'm going to share the screen. So when Annie is saying that she carries it wherever she goes on the last night of camp, um, during our closing, um, Gosh, what's with yeah. the waterworks? So um, on the, the last night of camp, we went around and everyone said um, one word to describe memory camp. Um, we went around the room and um, the words were freeing, full, friendship, respite, Gary the poet threw in pie, fun, inclusive, emotional, warmth, fantabulous, renewal, joy joyful, relaxing, awesome, supported, exhilarating, interesting, beautiful, and connected. And Annie, that just is so special to me that you printed it and carry it with you. Um, oh, I have to I'll, <laughs> I'll be going till the day I die. So we're in this together, sister. Um, okay. So what would you say, yeah, your all-time favorite, favorite, favorite thing was about going? Oh, there are so many. There are so many to, um, okay, I did make some notes. So let me know because there is a big one here that is Gary um, brought it up earlier too, but never before with the caregiving and being with Randy, um, was I ever with so many other people that were afflicted um, and with their caregivers and like he said before, when you come in to that campground, it all goes away. Oh, geez. Um, it just all goes away. Everybody is the same. So many people afflicted with the diseases would talk to Randy and I both as normal people. And sometimes I don't feel like he feels normal. And he did because he interacted with them with the caregivers as well as the care recipients. And that to me made me very happy because it was like the old him. It was like he could be his real self and he didn't have to work so hard to be in a social situation. And his word for you was exhilarating. I know, I remember he threw that out. And I remember the look you gave him like, oh. where did that come from? <laughs> he enjoyed it tremendously. Tremendously, we both did. But that, um, yeah, we didn't have to worry about a thing. And it was fabulous. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. Um, what did it do for your mind, body, and spirit? Oh, I felt like I had it back. I felt like. I could think for myself and it just kind of cleared me up again. It, it made me feel whole for myself again. Yeah. I remember, I think probably for everyone, when you're going up the hill to leave, your guts are kind of churning because you're so sad to leave. Yeah. Um, like I said, I want to stay there forever. <laughs> I know. I know. Would you, and I mean, I, it's my last question for you, and I think we already know what you'll say, but would you, um, for professionals on the call, thinking of maybe replicating this or maybe helping us promote memory camp in their areas um, to encourage people that they work with to come, um, would you encourage family caregivers to participate in memory camp? Oh, yeah, there's no question. Was that a question? Um, <laughs> no, it's, I think, needed. I think it's something that they have to experience so they can realize that there are people and places out there that can assist and that can help and it, that you can do it together with the person you're caring for. That's a big deal just to see him smile. And it doesn't have to be, you know, about anything specific in our little house, but to see him 
smile out there with other people and get into Gary's poems and, <laughs> and just, yeah. yeah, and talk to all the different people and feel like he was in real society and not on, not uh, being glared at. He felt part of it all. So for a caregiver to see that with the person they care about, it, there are no words to explain that. So yeah, they, caregivers should all go. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Annie, I miss you. I'll uh, I'll be in touch after this. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're right at two o'clock. Um, if anyone has any questions, um, I'm going to follow up with an email to everyone who registered today, whether they were able to join or not with the recording, the PowerPoint. Um, I'm going to send some resources to the to Gary's um, to Gary's website as well as Carrie's. And I think that's it, right? Thank you so much for coming, everyone. Gary, thank Rachel. you for being here. Carrie, Annie, thank you, everyone. Expect an email from me before tomorrow, end of the day. Thank, thank you, everyone. You. Thank you.